all right so um what we're gonna do is we're just gonna continue on a little bit what um minister ashley was talking about uh, i'll give you the title we're gonna talk about the power of unity tonight and what we're gonna do is we're gonna bounce through some scripture so that we can prove to you what happens when we actually get on the same page with each other. But first, um, we have a little quiz. So, um, <laughs> like I need a picture of Abigail's face. She's like, this Abigail. Um, you don't have, don't shout out the answers if you're taking notes and you're writing it out or if you grab your calculator. Um, you can save it. I'll give you the, an we'll talk about the answers at the end. Um, but I need to give you the questions first so that we can get through it. And it's not difficult. Um, you won't be graded. Um, I might internally judge what you say or do, but you're not going to get a grade. But here we go. Um, can you put the first question up for us? Okay. Oh, sh this is a quiz. Quiz. Keep it to yourself. Like cover your answers, all that stuff. You guys remember that? I don't know. You might be that kid who takes their test like this because they don't want anybody to look at their answers. <laughs> be the kid that gets them all wrong anyways. I'm like, I wasn't trying to look at your paper anyways. All right. There are three questions. So that's question one. That's question one. I'm like, I see some people you get your calculators out. That's no, not good. Um, second question, I'm letting you know it's a word problem. So you're going to have to. Okay. Oh, they're like, can you read it for us? All these kids with these accommodations. All right. Bob, Jane, Shadrach, Lil Q, and Aretha went fishing. The group caught 100 fish total with each person catching the same amount. How many fish did each person catch? I don't, are you supposed to yell out the answer? I told you we're gonna go over the answers at the end. <laughs> I even read it out loud, girl. My goodness, I even, I followed everybody's 504, all the IP accommodations, all the star stuff. Um, okay, last question. Okay, just, just. I know some of you guys have not gotten to some algebra stuff maybe, but this, this is light work, light work. I know for a fact, my man, Jonathan, my man, Jonathan's a math, math guy. He knows what's up. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. Okay, are we good? All right, here we go. That was our three questions. We'll get, to, we'll go back to it at the end. We'll go back to it at the end. All right, so. When we talk about unity, all right, we're going to break it down for a second. Um, unity is a spiritual law. It's a spiritual law. There are a lot of spiritual laws within the Bible. And what that means is they are principles, they are truths, they are facts, they are things that we have to learn how to operate in. If you don't, you're going to operate them in them in some way, shape, or form. And a lot of spiritual laws and concepts, we don't fully understand. So sometimes we have to break them down so that we understand them so that we know how to use them. Like a spiritual law is sowing and reaping. Some people don't understand that it's not just a natural thing. It's a spiritual law. Like my six-year-old asked me all the time, okay, how do trees grow? And I explained to her, you have to plant a seed and then you plant it in 
uh, good soil and the soil gives it nutrients and you have to water it and eat sunlight. And she goes, yeah, but how does the seed turn into a big tree? And that's when I have to humble myself and be like, I, I don't know. I just know that's how it works. Thankfully, she's a super kid, and I can say because God made it that way, and she's like, okay, awesome. There's going to be a point when she's going to be like, okay, but how does God make it work? And then I'm going to have to Google some stuff. But it's a, spiritual, it's a spiritual and a natural principle. When you plant a seed, it grows. We don't know how this tiny little seed becomes this massive tree, but it happens. So unity, when we're talking about unity, it is a spiritual law. And so what we're going to do is I just want to show you some things in the word so that we can do a better job of using it. Because I'm telling you, we use, we, we use seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping all the time, whether you think you do or not. The words you say bear harvest in your life. The things you do for others bear fruit in your life. And so these spiritual laws, because God has set them up and he has put them out there, they work for good and they can work for evil. So if there are these spiritual laws, these concrete things that we need to understand, we should probably learn how to operate them for the good and use them for the kingdom. So unity is one of them. So we're going to read um, a few scriptures and then we'll break it down. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 1.10. And I'm just going to throw a bunch of scriptures at you guys so that um, you don't think I'm just like making something up. Let me put it up there. This is Paul. He says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. So when somebody's like, I appeal to you, this person is like, please, please, please hear me out. And he's talking to the church at Corinth, one of the churches that Paul established. Um, they had a lot of signs and wonders. There were a lot of amazing things happening there, but they had some issues. And so Paul is like, I need you. And we're talking 1 Corinthians chapter 1. He's saying, I need you to be united. You have to be united, be united. Let there be no divisions among you. There's no reason for you to be divided. Okay, that's one. Next scripture. Um, this is one of my favorites. And this is when we have to understand the spiritual law of unity can work for good and it can work for evil. So that's why it's important for us to learn how to operate in it. Um, this is Genesis 11, and this is a story of the Tower of Babel. If you don't know the background of it, this is after the flood. So after the flood, Noah and his family survived the flood, and God says, okay, I need you guys to go out, um, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. The same thing he told Adam and Eve. He's like, I need you guys to spread out and go do your thing. There are eight of you left. Go fill the world. And you're like, okay, cool. You know what they did? They all hung out in the same area. Instead of going and like taking over the world and spreading out and creating families and nations and stuff, they just all kind of huddled together. And so they weren't always operating under the best. And so they thought, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to build this pagan tower and we're going to go up to the heavens and we're gonna, all these crazy things, crazy ideas. When God really told them, I need you to like spread out. This whole planet is yours. Why are y'all all right here? All up on top of each other. But here's the deal. The spiritual law of unity was at work. And so this is what happens. And the Lord said, behold, they are one people 
and they have all one language. So they were united. Praise God, they were united. And he said, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they purpose to do now will be impossible for them. Why was nothing impossible for them? Because they were all speaking the same language. They were all unified. So the spiritual law of unity was at work. The problem was they were united to do something that they shouldn't have been doing. And God is like, the spiritual law works. So whatever it is that they put their mind and their hearts to, they are going to be able to accomplish. That's not a good thing. They kept, you know, they would have kept building this tower and who knows what else they would have done. So if you know the story of the Tower of Babel, he had to confuse their language. He had to give them different languages so that they couldn't necessarily communicate, so that they were no longer on the same page. And then, thankfully, they moved away from each other. I'm like, you know what? I don't know what you're talking about, so I'm going over here with the people that sound like me. Fine, I don't even know what you said, but you're going that way, I'm going this way. And that's how we dispersed around the world. But had God not done that, who knows what would have happened. It would have built some tower to Mars or something. And who knows? But it was the spiritual law of unity and oneness that made it so that God was like, listen, nothing is impossible to them because they were on the same page. So, um, can you go back to the first scripture, first Corinthians? So I want you to look around the room. Let's take a look, take a look, actually do it. Look around, look at some of the faces of the people in here. Here's the deal. I know, I know we have a couple guests. Welcome to our guests, our first timers. Um, welcome guys. We, the majority of you are here as members or um, partner kids or the children of members. You guys are part of the household of faith. So I'm just going to keep it to 1440. I appeal to you 1440 by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you. I'm not saying you guys have to love to do the exact same thing at the exact same time, wear the same thing. But you know what? There are some things that we just need to be on the same page about. And this, these next few weeks are the perfect opportunity for us to join together. Because if we join together and if we are operating on the spiritual law of unity, there is nothing that is impossible for us. So we got to move a little bit quicker. All right. So let's, um, all right, I'm going to do it. Cheesy dad joke. Yes. The, the groans of teenagers actually like, I don't know. I'm a former teacher. There's something that just makes me happy. Um, all right, what kind of car did the disciples drive? Yes. Nope. All right, what kind of car did the disciples drive? All right, go to Acts, Acts 2. Oh, no, actually go to Acts 1. Acts 1, verse 12. It said, they, then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount Call, all of it, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James, all these with one accord. So the disciples drove our Honda Accord because they were all in one accord. Yes. So all, it wasn't supposed to be funny. It's a dad joke. It just makes me happy. Thank you. I will take that negative five. Um, all these 
with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. All right, so this is when they were in the upper room. What came after this? Who knows? Acts 2. Yep, they're all in one accord. They're all in unity in the upper room praying. This is right after Jesus ascended into heaven. He said, go and wait. Ruth. The fire of the Holy Spirit fell into that room. You have to understand the power of unity. When we join together, there are multiple things that happen. One of them is nothing's impossible for you. The second is God releases power into situations when the people are joined together. It's just one of the, the benefits of this law. He does it every single time, every single time. So we can go through, I have a few other scriptures, but if we study through in any time, the power of the Holy Spirit came and fell in a particular place where the disciples were. It, they, it always mentions that they were all there in unity. They were all there unified together. Um, Miss Ashley was talking about Ananias and Sapphira and how they, uh, they tried to deceive and lie to Peter in the Holy Spirit. When we backtrack a little bit, um, it talks about how all the people that were part of the church they were just like selling off their stuff. They were all living together in this place. They said no one had any need whatsoever. No needs. Can you imagine what life is like where the power of God is flowing and no one has a single need? Food, clothing, shelter, all of those things were taken care of. There's no jealousy. There's no bickering, there's no fighting, and it's because they were all together unified. So 1440, we have the opportunity to, as a youth group, unite together, join together, start operating on this spirit, I mean, on this law of um, unity, this concept, this spiritual law. If we do that, can you imagine what it would be like if no one in 1440 has any need? We're talking physical needs. Remember, like at this point, this is Peter and those guys are walking down the road and people are trying to rush and get in just to lay in the street so that Peter's shadow could go by them. And they were being healed because of the power of God that was operating in him. Imagine if 14, 40, like some teenagers got together and said, hey, you know what? We're going to do something. We're going to make a change. We're going to join together. The person who's sitting to my left, to my right, who's sitting in front of me, behind me, you know what? I'm going to love that person. I'm going to believe in that person. I'm going to trust that person. I'm going to speak well of that person. We go to Ananias and Sapphira, and you know what? They stepped out of that unity, stepped into deception, and that spiritual law of unity, it costs them their life. Like you can't walk into a situation where the people are united or are one, are operating by the Holy Spirit and you come in and you try to deceive them. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. So here's your deal. Leave the bickering the fighting, the name calling, the backbiting, all of the negative things, leave them where they belong. Like speak to those things, cast them into the sea. Send them back to hell where they belong. But here, bring in that love, bring in the joy, bring in the unity. Bring in the person who's like, hey, you know what? Yeah, I'll come and watch your concert. Yeah, you know what? I'd love to come and watch you play. Hey, how's school going? How's life going? How's your family doing? Those are the things that when we join together as a youth group, 
there are going to be some major outpourings. And it's going to be to the point where just like the early church, no one's going to have need for anything. And I, I have faith and I believe that this is the type of youth group and you come from the type of families and you are part of the heritage and lineage of faith where that's something we can actually attain. That's something we can get. That's something we can do. You guys have the word foundation. You know what's going down. You know what the word says. So we start operating in it. It's going to be awesome. So let's read a couple more. Um, Go to Ecclesiastes 4. Sometimes the Bible is real simple. It says, two are better than one. Just flat out. They could have put a period there. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. Meaning what they um, go to do, it's many hands make light work. All right, keep going. Verse 10, for if they fall... One will lift up his fellow, but woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Be pretty awesome if you're in a tough situation and you got a buddy. You have somebody who has your back. (laughs) I'm not going to say that. We don't have enough time. I'll tell you all the story later. Um, Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Um, This is my disclaimer. I'm not telling you guys to lay and keep each other warm. But they're talking about when you're out and about. It's just better to have a buddy. Again, if... Um, oh, and although, yeah, you can, go to, you can go to 12. And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. We're just stronger together. This is what it is. I know none of you would never do this, but... Um, You don't want to get into a battle by yourself. But you also don't want to get into battles with the wrong people for the wrong reasons. Because again, that spiritual law of unity, you unite with the wrong thing and you are going to reap the wrong harvest. Just how it goes. All right. So let's do this. Let me show you, numbers-wise, the power of unity, the biblical power of unity. All right, what's 1,000 plus 1,000? Wrong. Wrong. You are wrong. He showed me the calculator. Biblically biblically speaking, when we apply the law of unity to this, um, go to Deuteronomy 32.30. How could one have chased a thousand? So if I bring my thousand to a fight and you bring your thousand to a fight, In the natural, that's 2,000. Not when you apply the spiritual law of unity to it. The spiritual law of unity multiplies things to a level that it's hard for us to understand. So it says, how could one have chased 1,000 and two have put 10,000 to flight? So you mean by myself, I can take down 1,000. Yep. And my buddy by himself can take down a thousand. Yep. But together, we're going to take down 2,000. And God's like, "Mm -mm." mm-mm. 3,000? Mm-mm. And he goes up to 10,000. So what that tells me is there is a special multiplying factor that happens when we unite together. All right, next. I'm out of time, but let's get, go to the second slide. All right, 
um, our peoples. How many fish did each person catch? <laughs> now, now, you know, you guys are all like, I don't know. I don't know. All right, I'm going to tell you this. It's 20. Okay. But here's the deal. In that same situation, go to the next, put the next, uh, this one. What does X equal? 100. Okay. Let's go to last scripture, Leviticus 26. Let me show you another instance where the law of multiplication boosts things. So it says, five of you shall chase a hundred. So the ratio, if I get five of my people, cool. Each of us can take down 20. It's nice. I like that ratio. One to 20, let's handle that. But here's what happens when you start to add more and more and more people to your team. He says, and a hundred of you shall chase 10,000. So now instead of one person taking down 20, that ratio starts to balloon. And now it's one person can take out a hundred. It's just the Bible. This is, this is just one of those things that we look at. The Bible says wherever two or three are gathered, I am there in the midst. The Holy Spirit's there. So the moment you join together with somebody the right way in unity, the Holy Spirit comes in, joins into that situation, and then multiplies whatever it is that you're doing. So whatever it is that you're believing for, find somebody else who is believing that same thing. Join together, unify with them, pray together with them, find some scriptures together with them. And you know what? That thing you're believing for, that thing you want is going to multiply. It's the law of unity. It's just spiritual law. It's in the Bible. We could go through some more scriptures. We could just show you, hey, when you join together, good things happen. So number one, join together. Let's, let's find a way to get in unity. We'll pray for it right now. Number two, watch who you unite with. You see really jacked up things happen in your life. Who have you hitched your wagon to? Who have you joined up with? Maybe you need to sever that and get with somebody else. Get with a different group of friends. Get with a different set of people. All right, deal? All right, let's stand so we can pray. And then we are going to acknowledge our birthday, July birthday people. All right. So let me pray for you guys. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the principles that we find in your word. Lord, we thank you for revealing them to us so that we can operate and work in them for the kingdom. We thank you for the multiplication factor that happens when we join together. What happens when we unite with each other? And Father, right now, as a youth group, Lord, I pray for there to be no divisions among 1440. I thank you that when we are walking the same direction, when we are agreeing, like it says in Amos, that your spirit will take us from one to 1,000 to two to 10,000 and that that multiple, multiplying factor increases in our lives, increases in the healings, increase, increases in the, the signs and wonders, increases in the finances. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.